Okay, so first of all, hello Tobias and, and welcome to Finland once again. Thank you very much. Very happy to be here. So today, sold out show at Hartwell Arena. And I actually just watched that you played in at the circus, which is like 1,500 people mm-hmm. in 2015. Mm-hmm. And now four years later, you are playing a sold out show in Hartwell Arena for 12,000 people. So that's pretty good in four years. Uh, yeah, it's really good. In between that, though, we, we did... Uh, yeah, you did yeah. Ice Hall, yeah, yeah. yeah. And also me, the, the Metallica show, but still, like, in quite short time, you yes. kind of gained huge following in Finland. Yes. And I guess that has been happening, like, everywhere in the world. More or less, yeah. I mean, sometimes you you make... You take bigger steps some some places, and and some other places are a little bit more backs and forths, depending a little bit on the you know the infrastructure of the the market, as they say, or or yeah. you know some t- But but you know, obviously, we we've been to Finland every year, at least once. Yeah. The last ten years, almost. Yeah, yeah. So it's been it's been pretty active, and and and. Um, yeah, it's very much like this. This feels like very much a, um, like a result of that. Yeah. yeah. So, when you see that timeline, are there like some specific spots where you have noticed that you have kind of grown fastly through some like release of some specific album or some tour or how do you see the growth yourself? Has it been like steady all the time or has there been like some huge gaps that you have noticed that now we used to play like in a club and now we are in an ice hall and yes like a year in between i think that the biggest jump must have been from from circus or the circus to yeah ali i must say because that was 1500 people to 6000 to 6000 so that's that's a bigger jump than from 6,000 to 10 or 11 or something. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm not sure exactly how many are here. I think 12 is the max. Oh, okay. But, you know, uh, technically, um, there's in, in, in arenas, you always have the, the little factor of if you're doing in the round shows, like Metallica does, you know, and, and yeah. a lot of bigger arena bands, they, they play so they, have, they have, have a crowd around the stage all the way through. Yeah. Uh, that usually means that they can sell out the the entire arena. Yeah. We still have like a big curtain, uh, you know, because of our backdrop and yeah, so yeah, we yeah. everything behind the stage is closed off, which means that you know if if the maximum capacity here is twelve, we're probably at ten and a half or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so but it's, it's still, but it's still impressive numbers in such a short yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, I'm not trying to soil, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, the ticket sales. I'm just saying that um, uh, you can always. That's that's the weird fun but sometimes also like a demoralizing thing when you're in arenas because there's always like some curtained off balcony somewhere that you're like oh yeah we can fit another (laughs) eight thousand up here like what yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) so you're you're never really you know you're never really there but i think that I, i i believe i've been told that every available seat with our production tonight is sold out yeah yeah so that we you know we did that here in the spring we did that in Stockholm as well at the Globe, which is pretty cool, um, because these are I mean even though I don't have the same relationship with Hotval, but since I know that this is the equivalent of the Globe, Globe for me is like that's where I saw yeah I guess that was a big deal yeah that meant a lot yeah and. Um, you know, when you come to these buildings after that, that like the next step is like outdoor sort of stadium yeah, kind yeah, of yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, the, the step from from making uh, from from playing sort of 10,000 people yeah. into stadiums is enormous yeah, because yeah. then we're talking 30, 40, 50,000 people. And that's a lot. I was actually going to ask you that now when you are in a phase to move to the fifth album, mm. how much do you actually take consideration about that fact that you will be playing to even bigger stages in the future? 
I, I read somewhere that you described that upcoming album like more, a bit more heavy and more like guitar driven in a way. Mm. So is that kind of like the focus also that you want to take this big, like like even the bigger production and that also requires like some bigger songs as well? Um, yeah, I guess I, I do take that into consideration because I, I'm I wouldn't go into the studio now and make a like some sort of weirdly paced noise slash prog album. Yeah. No, I wouldn't do that because that is not the forum that we're playing in. Yeah. Um, I mean, I set out already on the Opus Eponymous to write songs that would sound great in on, on a live stage because I wanted it to be like uh, big rock music. Yeah, you know, yeah, it, yeah, I wanted it to sound like a, a rock band that you you know you wanted to see on a stage. Um, so making a new fifth album means that I'm gonna continue writing songs that will sound great on a right even, even bigger. Yeah, bigger, yeah, bigger. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, if you, there are certain things that you, you you sort of pick out when you're playing bigger halls that really fast songs usually don't work very well. Yeah. Um, because they don't sound very good. It's big and echoey and booming. Yeah. And, yeah. and so it works better if it's sort of more normally in normal pace. You know. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um. And I think most bands do that. You can, you can pretty much hear that on any Metallica or any Iron Maiden sort of band that, you know, once they took the step from playing theaters and clubs and they started playing arenas, the music sort of like, whoa, they yeah, started yeah. slowing it down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you, you, you need to... Um, it's, it's, I would say that I, I like to compare what I do to... Um, being a chef or having a restaurant or the cinematic world and if we compare it to the um, gastronomic world where we're talking about um, uh, making food and selling it it's kind of like the difference between cooking for a friend at home yeah. and when you're cooking for 40 people you have to have a different Of course, obviously. Yeah, otherwise you're gonna fuck that up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah and 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 you have to plan it in another way. Um, you, some people might consider that, you know, you know, bending over or something. I don't. I I find that that's what you do when you're playing. Uh, you know, I want to write cool rock music that that I'm gonna perform on a stage. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And you want it to feel good, and you want it to be. It's like writing jokes. What's the matter? What's the point of writing jokes if they're not funny? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I totally yeah. agree. So you mentioned already Iron Maiden and Metallica, and I, I read the Kerrang interview that you recently did, where you actually talked about Black Album and Power Slave, which are like those bands' fifth album. So, mm. do you kind of feel that the fifth album is sort of like a career-defining album for a band? And do you take like a lot of pressure? of that you mentioned quite classic albums on that interview so you, so you must be feeling special when heading to this next phase yeah. of well, the band what i th what i want to make clear is that i'm not saying what people what some people thought was that i'm gonna make power slave or the black album that's that that's not what i said yeah i said that we are right now if you look at like the circumstances we are pretty much in a very similar yeah. position like yeah. as they were before writing Power Slave or the Black Album because they had taken the band to a certain point where it's sort of a make or break deal yeah like so you feel that way at the moment with this band also yes I, I do feel that um, in order to elevate to Not only doing this again, but potentially doing something bigger. Yeah. You need to um, deliver an album that is according to certain energies or whatever. Yeah. And and because it's also um, 
when you when you get to a certain point in term of, of in terms of of public um, attention um, when you release a record on a, uh, on a certain momentum the expectancy of that record the expectations of that record from a public point of view is at a certain level yeah and that doesn't not mean the amount of riffs you have or the amount of of, of uh, you know how, how good it is it just means what kind of impact it does yeah. how many people will on release week have an opinion on your record um, and as of right now for every record it has been growing yeah. so every time that we release something more and more people think something about it so upon releasing the next record upon the momentum that has been built on with this album cycle and all the previous ones it's bigger than it ever has been before yeah, yeah so yeah. that is and what i'm saying been the same with each album so far also yes. for you and in many cities countries markets whatever you want to call them we have now gotten into people's heads that if you want to go see ghost we're going to play at your ice hockey arena yeah yeah, yeah. so it's important that when you release a new record on that level that it's it still feels like that yeah, yeah oh ghost course. just had a new record out of course we're going to go see them at the dome yeah, yeah 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 I, i totally get what what you were saying on that interview but as you said i guess that was something that people could take wrong also people want to take something like that wrong. <laughs> you, <laughs> you know. know the internet everybody wants to take something wrongly yes. that's, <laughs> so, that's 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 unfortunately the, the, that's one of the the, the 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 quirks the quirky things about being someone who's being asked stuff like that yeah, yeah because people want you to say things that they can get angry about <laughs> so as as a last question before we wrap things up what's the situation with the upcoming novel have you already started writing it or will you start writing it in january when you are hitting studio to do some kind of pre-production for it uh, and what kind of plans do you have when it comes to that album i uh, i have already started writing it Um, I have been in the studio a couple of days to record a few demos. So, uh, you know, I've, I've, I've sort of, I started that already in the summer just to sort of feel that, okay, I've started. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and um, what the plan is, I mean, after New Year's, I'm gonna go into the studio first. I'm gonna record one song that it's going to be part of something that we will know of in a year from now. Uh, so that's the first thing. That's that's basically one singular song for something. And that's going to be just to sort of get the rocks off a little. Yeah. Because then that way you can you can go into uh, a new studio maybe. You can try something like that. You can try that new amp that you wanted to try. And you can sort of, that's more of like an experiment. So as soon as I'm done with that in January, that's going to be like the first or second week in January. Um, after that, I'm just going to start full time Monday through Friday, being in in, in the studio um, writing, um, and that's what I do up until May last and June first. I'm gonna be in some other studio with. Um, preferably the drummer that I've been using for the last 10 years for most of my recordings and hopefully then we're gonna start recording the drums <laughs> yeah. for all these 15 songs something like that I'm gonna write okay. some of them are written some of them are in bits and pieces and some of them I don't know yet but there will be a new song in next year at least from that another project that you have on there will be one other thing coming out next year okay yes so hey Thank you a lot for your time and all Thank the you. best for tonight's show. Anything you want to say as last words to the Finnish fans who will be hearing this afterwards? Well, thank you. I mean, this. Uh, I mean, Finland has always been a, such a fantastic place for 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 Ghost, and uh, as you already sort of touched upon, Finland and every show that we've ever done in Finland has always been a very great. You know, good experience. Good experience, but it's also been a very good barometer for for where we're going. Um, and um, yeah, super supportive crowd, and and 
I love coming here. So we're going to continue doing that. Whether you like it or not. <laughs> Thank you a lot for the chat. Thank you for chatting with me.